Okay, looks like we're live-ish. Wait for this to start up real quick. And come on, refresh. There we go. Okay, so on if you go to, let me just load up the website here. So do this live stream Tuesday mornings. Uh, 4 a.m. PST, and then I do a live stream on my channel. Same thing, Thursday mornings, uh, 4 a.m. PST to 6 a.m. PST. And if you go to um, the Pixelogic YouTube channel and you go to the Pavlovich Workshop, that'll be the uh, backup video on demand stuff. Hey, thanks for showing up. Um, Actually, you know what? I need to keep track of some stuff today here. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up real quick. There we go. Um, oops. So there was one uh, comment on the last one. I try and go through the episodes and just uh, find the comments and see if there's anything I can help with. Sometimes I forget, I'll be honest. Um, but there's one question. Uh, how to create simple ornament on a flat surface. And we did a little bit of that. Uh, we can go into depth a little bit more on that. Hey, guys. Um, thanks for showing up. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of ornamentation today. Uh, this, it reminded me of an old helmet that I did. I completely forgot. Uh, I went over a long, this is pretty, pretty old helmet, but, uh, we can kind of start doing this kind of type of stuff as well. And you can kind of see if I flip back and forth here, this was the original concept helmet where I just kind of threw it together really quickly just to kind of get the shape, the block out that I wanted and get my shapes in there. And then just going through rebuilding where needed and kind of splitting this thing up where needed just to kind of get some seam lines in there and also doing a little bit of ornamentation and ornamentation sculpting and kind of doing these type of things to get that ornamentation on there and you know matchmakers a bunch of different ways to kind of do this type of thing um it's been a while since i've done it so bear with me and uh yeah we're gonna go over that today and uh and luckily so mr fur one z responded and he's got a lot of good uh techniques in there so we'll go over some of those too i'll just go through his uh, description and we'll just kind of uh play around with that a little bit hey axel thanks for showing up um, okay, so let's do a little bit of this. So let me see, let me see, where do I want to start? Um, kind of an, the easiest place to start, I think, for me anyways, is this organic stuff up here. So if you wanted to do uh, something like this, it would just be, like I did here, it's just a matter of, if I go into solo mode here, uh, I probably just started out with a dynamesh shape and just kind of blocked it in, like so. And then I went in with my clay brush and just started sculpting out a basic lion head here so you know clay brush hold on preferences edit turn off align cursor to surface which is what I usually do and just going through here and sculpting now in order to make this look a little bit more hard surface while I'm sculpting while I'm cleaning up my concept sculpt is uh, you can just hold down alt with the H polish brush and you can kind of just polish this down like so and you can kind of start getting some nice surfaces in here and kind of indicating where you might want uh, cut lines and you can do that with standard brush or Damien standard. So if you go in your Damien standard brush, so B D S i will grab your Damien standard brush. If you don't have it assigned to a hotkey, you can just go through and start cutting in where you might think those are where you might want to like, you know, either cut in and rebuild. You could also hold down alt and kind of build up to an edge like so. And then you can use your clay brush to kind of go through here and make these uh, hard surface. And then again, hold down Alt with your H polish brush. And you probably won't be able to do this with a mouse. Uh, I get that a lot when people are asking why their H polish brush doesn't seem to be working that well, is it's kind of a feather touch brush. See how big my brush is? And I'm going over here and like just polishing these surfaces down and then control drag to Dynamesh again and you can get a nice uh, hard edge surface there. Let's go ahead and turn perspective off there. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is specifically. He's, uh, he's he, actually, I, I do know who he is. He's my base male model that I use occasionally. He does have a very uh, uh, Romanesque look to him, I suppose. But, so we've got this here. And let's see what else I did on this thing. Do we reconstruct? Oh, I do have subdivision history on these. So after doing that 
sculpt. Let me go turn perspective on. Uh, after doing that block out sculpt, the, the concept sculpt that I'm talking about here, uh, I went in and just kind of broke him up and rebuilt him. Probably with Zero Mesh, if I had to guess. And let's see, you can reconstruct this stuff. And now he has a basic, yeah, this looks like a total Zero Mesh. Um, basic subdivision history here and the subdividing up as I go, just kind of splitting those pieces off and projecting and then uh, getting those to kind of sit together nicely. Same thing for this trim. This this trim is a little bit more specific. So this one I probably went through and uh, used poly Z sphere uh, retopology. So if I go back here, I've got this one kind of sitting here. And it's, again, this is just probably at first just a dynamesh with a little bit of clip brush. So like Control Shift, go grab my clip curve, and you can kind of just chop pieces out and kind of get the shape going that you want like this and you can see it's not detailed at all but you know clean it up as you want to here hold down alt and kind of just go through here like this and with my h polish brush and if you wanted to like bevel some of these edges while you're sculpting you can go in with your trim dynamic and just go in here and just kind of pull right along there and kind of indicate where you want these bevel lines to be of course you can always rebuild this basic shape here and then bevel in later with Z modeler, of course. Um, <laughs> um, so, so anyway, yeah. So yeah, rebuild that with the Z, Z spheres, and then you can crease it up, and you know, get to this this part here where it's just kind of this shape. And then as you subdivide up, it'll be nice and crisp, and you know, creasing where you want. And let's go out of solo mode. So. Uh, working our way back, we'll go over, we can go over some ornamental hair sculpting techniques and it'll actually come to play when we start doing the ornamentation. So let's talk ornamentation and the best way to do that. Actually, let's not talk about the best way to do that because honestly, I don't really know. This is again, on the fly. I was looking at it this like literally five or six minutes ago going, what uh, questions did we have? And then ornamentation came up. I'm like, well, let's see if I remember how to do this stuff. If I had to guess, we could use shadow box and we could use uh, masking and extracting. And we could also use some brushes in here, some custom ornamentation brushes. And there's also deco brushes in there. So if you go, um, for example, hit B, D, there's a deco on here. And these are kind of fun to kind of play with. They'll kind of spin your alpha. Like, so let's go ahead and crank up that Z intensity here. And if you go into your comma key, brush, deco, there's some a lot of deco brushes in here too. And these are deco, I'm assuming is short for decoration brushes. And yeah, this one will kind of spin through the mesh here. You kind of sculpt that in like that. Uh, but if you want a little bit more control, or you're doing something very specific. Let's start with, uh, I guess let's start with shadow box here. Let me drag out a cylinder, make it a poly mesh 3D. And um, okay. So we'll go to, if I didn't want to destroy this and I wanted to do another object here, I could just duplicate this off and then hide my original cylinder here. And then we could go to our geometry shadow box and just turn shadow box on. Now, if it's gonna be very detailed ornamentation, I'm probably gonna to wanna to turn this resolution up. So I'm gonna change this to 256 and I'm gonna change my polish down to like one, oops, not 13, because I can always control that later with uh, polish by features probably depending on how it spits out my poly groups here. Although, no, I can always just extract again. So we'll just, we'll do turn polish down to one. And we'll shadow box this. And now we have shadow box here. So I'm gonna control drag. And now we have, if I go into my floor plane here, you're going to see, uh, where's my Z forward here? Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's the blue line pointing this way. So this is the back here. So if I hold down control and start drawing with my masking, it's gonna go ahead and start creating um, Poly groups here, and of course, if you hold down Control Alt and unmask, you'll get this. So if you hit X, you can do uh, X. Oops, X symmetry. So you can kind of go through and do some cool ornamentation that way. And then you can do X and Y symmetry. So we're going to go to my transform menu here. We'll talk about symmetry here. So you can kind of do, and this is just if you wanted to manually brush in ornamentation, you can just go through here and start doing uh, some cool stuff here. Um, Everybody's still good. I'm gonna. I'm trying to keep an eyeball on the chat too. So if I miss a question, just keep hollering it out. I'll get. I'll get to it. I think. Um. So 
you can start doing this. And now, of course, if you want to, you can also pull from a, a texture library. I'm gonna go to my alphas here, and I can think under stencils, I have some just ornate looking stuff. And this will save you some time if you have uh, things you've already done, an Illustrator, Photoshop, um, any of that kind of stuff. So we'll just grab this butterfly here. I'm just double clicking this. <clears throat> and as long as this was saved as a 16-bit grayscale, it should show throw it right into your alpha by default. So now uh, I can turn that off. Let's go back to our standard brush. Um, and if I want to use my standard brush for something other than just like basic sculpting, what I can do is just go to standard clone. And now I've got a standard one brush. If I hit B, it's going to throw it right at the end here and I can just do whatever I want to this. And then I can hit Alt S, which is my hotkey for standard brush. And then I don't uh, override any standard brush settings as I go. Um, and uh, yeah, what brush do I use? Yeah, well, a whole bunch of them actually. So we're gonna, we'll go over that in a second. So let's see, we've got this here and we got our standard one and I don't wanna sculpt with this one necessarily because we're using shadow box. I mean, you can sculpt on your shadow box, but uh, I'm gonna change this to drag rect. I'm gonna grab this alpha here. Actually, not even for our standard brush. What am I thinking? We need to hold down control and that goes into mask pin. And now I'm gonna go to drag rect with the mask and then grab their, our ornamentation here. Uh, now, if I do it this way, you're gonna see number one, it kind of fades out towards the edges. So hold down control and change your focal shift to negative 100. And that'll go ahead and um, that'll go ahead. Uh, okay, so yeah, there's a mask over there. That'll go ahead and make it so it's nice and crispy all the way around. Now, as I drag this out, you're gonna see I'm already getting some nice ornamentation in here. Uh, of course, if you want to, you could uh, turn off X symmetry and just drag out you know, the one butterfly here. If you want a little bit more control on placement, one thing I try and bring up all the time is if you go to B, T, transpose smart mask, let's load up our alpha in there. Um, so you're gonna know that uh, with transpose smart mask, what you can do is you can hold that control and drag and that'll drag out your mask. And then if you hit space bar, you're able to move that around. So it gives you a little bit more control than simply uh, just drag recting out your uh, mask there. So there we got that. So, uh, but if you don't want to use that, you can just use your mask pen. So if I hit Q, we'll go back to standard. Now, if you want to use your regular transpose again, you got to go back to B, T, hit transpose, and then you're back where you started there. And then, uh, then we can, of course, drag out this. We'll turn on X symmetry here. We'll kind of overlap some of these. Get some ornamentation going. Um, uh, yeah, so Alex Alexander Minna says, I'm new to ZBrush. Why did you start out that with a cylinder? You could start it with um, anything. In fact, if, you know, if I was doing this guy's head, for example, well, that's probably a good thing to bring up. I'm going back to this dude. And um, if I alt tap his head. Now, if I just go into shadow box mode right now, it's going to completely obliterate my head. So if I want to keep my head, let's, let's say we want to put a pair of sunglasses on him. I'm going to duplicate this guy off. And then I'm going to go into my shadow box here. And uh, just if I hit shadow box, what it's going to try and do is take the model and go ahead and give me uh, project the side view and the back view of my head and then the bottom view of my head. And this is what I end up getting. Obviously, I lose a lot of detail when I do that uh, because it can only pick up so much information from orthographic views here. Uh, but what I can also do is turn on transparency mode and then I can go through here and uh, let's go ahead and turn alpha off. Go back into drag dots here so I can go through here. And I can kind of put in a little pair of shades and then we can go to the front view, but we can kind of see through him and we can kind of dictate where we want uh, the mask to go from the front. So if I hit X, we can go ahead and plug that in here. And now we've got a pair of shades. Now, of course, it has to, this back has to correspond to um, how far out these shades go. So I'm going to have to plug in a little bit more masking on the side here. There we go. So now I've got kind of a ugly pair of shades in there. Um, but I mean, cause right now it doesn't go around his head. So that's where it kind of gets into like, well, do I go through here and kind of like wrap his shades around a little bit? And, but then that has to correspond. So what I'd basically do at this point is hit shadow box, uh, get my shades in there and then just do a quick uh, like clean up pass and uh, just go in here with my move brush and kind of move this stuff around. If I was to create a pair of glasses in shadow box, which I probably wouldn't be inclined to do, I'd probably use Z-Modeler, but just as a quick demonstration. Uh, you can start with any object, basically. Um, hit OK, and then we'll go back here. 
So uh, again, if this resolution isn't quite doing it for you, you can back out of Shadowbox. So if I turn Shadowbox off, we've got our mesh here, and we can go in here and we can kind of see we've got a front poly group, a side poly group, and a back poly group here. And uh, let's go ahead and raise that resolution to like 512 maybe. And then if we hit Shadowbox again, uh, we'll get an even denser Shadowbox here. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with Shadowbox. You can project, you can paint, um, paint stuff uh, directly on here. Um, let's just go ahead and make an ornamentation thing real quick, and then we'll talk a little bit more about Shadowbox. So, um, kind of do that here. Let's say we like that. I'm going to go ahead, and now you can make the this as thick as you want. This is kind of just the default thickness that throws in there sometimes. If I want to, I can go back in here to my mask pin, and I can go, okay, I want it to be, and you can see the gray lines at the top and the bottom that correspond with where this side stops. So we can make it this thick, and we can also go back in here and be like, you know what, I'm gonna chop this part out and this part out to get that kind of thickness. Oops, I uh, make sure you don't drag over the back there. Let's try that again. So what happened was I had my ornamentation here, and then when I went back to my mask pin and I made the thickness, it was fine because uh, I'm not touching the mask over here. Now, if I control alt drag here, it should, yeah, it should leave it alone. If you control alt drag way out here, it's going to unmask all the way back through, so be careful about that. Uh, but anyways, you can kind of do this kind of masking, and then when we go into our, turn our shadow box off, you can kind of see there's the profile we plugged in, and then there's the, um, the front view we kind of plugged in there. Um, <laughs> uh, do you know if there's a way to remove or single insert mesh from an existing insert mesh brush? Do you have to create a new insert mesh brush? The one you don't want, so I'm going to talk here. Um, you can't, but what you can do is you can keep a library of uh, basically what you'll have as a tool. Uh, I don't know if I have one available to me right now, but basically when you're setting up your insert multi mesh tool, uh, we can just create one real quick. Let's see, we've got a star here. So let's say uh, we like this star, and so I'm going to go to my subtool here. We made a polymesh 3D, right? Yeah. So then we got the star we like. I'm going to duplicate this off, and I'm going to go to a brush insert. I'm just going to pick one here. Um, Insert multi mesh curve. Actually, we'll just go to brush insert uh, industrial parts. So if I hit M here, we can go and just uh, pick any one of these, like the pipe. And then we can go to geometry, modify topology, and we can do mesh from brush. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Mesh from brush here. And then I can hit M. I can grab a spring. Do, oh, we probably want to duplicate this off. And then we'll do mesh from brush. And I can just kind of take brushes like that. That's just one way to do it. So once we got our insert multi mesh set up, we can do tool save as, and you can just throw this on your desktop and say, this is my IMM test. And now that you have the Z tool available to you, every time you hit, you know, obviously orient these things the way you want them to be drawn out on your object, but go to brush, create insert multi mesh, and that'll create your insert multi mesh. And uh, since it's just a one button thing, as long as you always have access to the sub tool, if you're always like, if I hit M, you're like, you know what? That spring is really bothering me. I never use it. So I'm going to take the spring and delete it out of my subtools here. Or, I mean, you could hide it if you don't want it to show up as well, if you want to kind of keep it in your subtools. And then just go to B, create insert multi mesh, and then you've got a new brush with just the two. So, not the greatest, most uh, elegant solution, but one that you can maybe use. Um, anyway, controlling depth using a graduated alpha. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm not sure. Uh, if you have an example, I could maybe um, go over that. I'm not sure. I mean, you can you can always control the alpha with uh, these alpha parameters here. So if we go here, um, you can go to your modify settings, and there's a mid value that you might want to play with, as well as intensity. That's kind of interesting. You can also go to alpha adjust and change this curve to kind of get you um, to kind of get you a little bit more control. So there's a lot of control in here. It might take a little bit of back and forth, um, but it should be doable, I would think. 
Um, but now let's go, uh, okay, just for this, we're gonna go back into uh, Shadowbox here. And really quickly, uh, I'm going to hold down Control, and we'll do this one more time. We'll grab this brush off, and you know what, I'm gonna turn off X, and I'm just gonna drag this out. Now, because I'm not using Smart Transpose Mask, I can't recenter it, but that's okay, we'll live. So I'll go ahead and drag that out here. And um, let me see if this is. Let me drag this off and I just want to take a quick look at it and see. Okay, yeah, so the reason why it is kind of splitting off here is because uh, the alpha itself isn't that high res. Let's, if we want a slightly cleaner result, I'm going to go back in here and we'll just grab something that's a little bit sharper on the edges, maybe. Let's grab this one. Here, let's see how this one looks. Uh, okay, this one's fine. Hold that control. And, oops, I'm going to plug that one in. There we go. And I suppose for this one, we could go ahead and just do that. And then if we want to clean this up a little bit here, we could hold down control and then go back in here. And then we could just hold down control alt. And we could do all sorts of flourishes or just manually go in and just add whatever we want to just with our masking here and then hold on control alt if you want to sharpen these things up and of course we can clean this up later so once we have this if we like it let's go ahead and um, let me get rid of some of this here say shadow box off and now we've got geometry here now I could have gone through on the other side and made it as thin as I want. I can also just go through here with transpose and make it as thin as I want. And I can also go through here and see how we have the front, the back, and the side polygroups. I can just isolate this polygroup here. Now this is the same polygroup here. So if I want to, I can go into, uh, you can go into your poly, polygroup menu. Hold on. Uh, way down here, there's a auto groups option under polygroups, which I have right here. And now I'll have a front, a back, and a side that are all different. And you can also use Polish by Features to kind of clean this up. You can go, you can isolate just this middle polygroup here and do a uh, Polish by Features. And you can kind of start cleaning that up. You can also turn on Open Circle, and that will kind of, it'll lose a little bit of the volume, but it'll clean it up, uh, make it really smooth. So you can kind of go through there and smooth that up. Uh, you can also Z remesh this if you want a uh, slightly cleaner geometry than just triangles here. And if I'm, I am going to Z remesh this, I'm probably just going to take this front part here and do a geometry modified topology delete hidden for you guys. It'll be in here. And then uh, we can just Z remesh. We can hit, um, we're across X symmetry here. I'm going to temporarily just go back into uh, X symmetry here. And we're going to go to Z remesher. I guess we should do it in the real menu. Zero measure here, and we'll do an adaptive size of like 10, and then target polygon count of 5, and then we have X turned on, so it'll be symmetrical, and we'll just zero mesh that real quick. Um, the squarish brush, I would imagine, would be clay buildup, and uh, we can go over some of that hair sculpting technique too to kind of get that stylized uh, sculpty hair. I want to say we did a little bit of that in a previous Pixelogic video on the channel, uh, but we'll re recover it again just because it's relevant to what we're doing and as we start uh, ornamenting this thing out. So now what we have is this thing here. Now if you need to flatten this out, you can go to the side view and you can just use clip and you can kind of clip it to a flat plane as well as if you want to, you can just use your transpose and pick an anchor point and then just hold down shift with move and just kind of force all those verts back to a straight flat plane. And now you can go through here and use your Z modeler. We can do Q mesh or we can do extrude polygroup all or all polygons and just pull this back. Now, if I, pull, I always pull back for some reason, but if I pull forward, uh, that'll go ahead and give us thickness and uh, it won't flip our, vert our uh, normals. But if we pull backwards, what it'll do is you'll see it looks kind of flipped. So we gotta go back down here to display properties and flip those around. And then we've got this piece here. And of course you can crease by polygroup if you want. So if I hit D, that's just going to kind of uh, subdivide these. And that's just a preview here. So if I go to dynamic, we can hit D and then shift D to turn that on and off. Um, if you do crease by polygroups in the crease menu, that will go through and keep your polygroup edges nice and crispy as you subdivide up. So you can kind of get that look going. Um, 
And you can also uh, you can also go through and sculpt this thing if you want. So you can like and honestly, if I'm going to be sculpting on this thing. I would probably have just this thing masked or just be sculpting on this one here. So if I go here, let's just go ahead and do, um, we don't have any real subdivision history, so we can just go ahead and delete hidden and then uh, shift D to turn off dynamic here. Hit X symmetry, X and Y symmetry. And then we can just go ahead and start uh, sculpting on this mesh. Let's go ahead and standard brush here. So you can kind of start pulling this stuff up and around. And we can always give this thing thickness later, or if we want to, if we want to go ahead and add that, it's not a big deal. We can just go ahead and do extrude, polygroup all, pull that back, flip our normals, isolate this one here, and then we can go ahead and just start sculpting on this one just with visibility masking. And then if I bring everything back, oops, look like it got a little wonky over there. We can just use our move brush here. We'll do shift D and we'll just use move brush to kind of grab these ones. Um, if you want to move something and it's picking up too much stuff in here, go into your move brush settings here. Let's go brush. Give me that. There we go. Auto masking. Turn on topological. Change that range to like 1.5 ish. And now I can move these things independently of the other one. There we go. And kind of pull these back. Um, it looks like I went a little bit low with my Ziri mesh. So if you don't need to go this low, I wouldn't. But um, it gets a little bit crazy around the corners. And of course, you could do a little bit of Z model cleanup if you want to. We'll just kind of pull these things into shape here. And then, um, oh boy, is this not staying? Stay up there. Thank you very much. And it really doesn't want to. There we go. Okay. And then uh, again, like we, like I said, we can isolate this uh, polygroup here. You can also turn off, if you want to, you can turn off um, line and you can still have the polygroup visible. You can just kind of go through and sculpt just line on, or you can turn um, polyframe off altogether and just keep uh, sculpting up as you go and kind of giving some depth to these little curly things like so and then uh, subdivide. Now in order to subdivide I got to bring everything back and if we have polygroups crease let's go ahead and do a quick mirror and weld across the X to match these things up for some reason it wasn't catching on that side. Um, and then we can do a crease polygroup here and then we can do a control D that'll give us a new subdivision and then we can isolate this again and just continue to kind of use our clay brush, clay build up, uh, standard brush, whatever you want or Damien standard brush to kind of detail this stuff out. You can hold down alt and kind of just start pulling out edges and kind of getting these things to come to points and split off and follow these things around. Bring everything back, control D, isolate again, hold down alt like so. And then you can use your clay brush here to kind of build up to those edges. And then you can use your H polish or smooth or pinch if you want to. You can go through here and smooth a little bit. And then if you want to, you can use your pinch brush and you can kind of pinch up to a pretty solid uh, shape there. Uh, let's see. Is there a way to render that into a flat mesh to be an alpha texture? Yeah, you can just, a um, couple different ways to do that. If you want it to be perfectly square, you can set up your document size. You can like turn off proportional and go like 1024 by 1024, hit resize. Yes, I would like to hit control N, zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole document, especially if you go big. Drag out your mesh here, and then you just go alpha, grab doc, and now you've got your alpha saved here. Um, an alternative method, if I go to document, turn on W size, new document, and that W size just fills up the space here, and then drag this out. You can also just use MRGBZ grabber. So if you go out of edit mode to drop that to the canvas, we can go in here and we'll use our MRGBZ grabber. And this one, you can just pull out and use spacebar to kind of uh, move it into place. And then if you hold down shift, that'll constrain it to a, to a uh, square. And now uh, that's gonna grab your texture information. So it's gonna grab MRGB material and your texture value, which we don't need. So I'm just gonna turn, around, turn that off. And then we've got our alpha in there that we grab. So there's our Z grab, there's our MRGBZ grabber. And then at this point, it would just be a simple matter of 
Uh, we go back to our head here. We can just use this here. So if we turn that alpha off for the pinch, we can go into that standard clone brush we made, which was this one here, standard one. We'll do drag rect. We'll grab that alpha we just made. And now you can just drag that on. Of course, you're gonna need lots of resolution. This guy's triangulated here. Um, so to get a little prettier result, we can go into our plane 3D, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to turn off the smooth modifier just so I don't get averaged corners here. And now when we drag this out against standard one, grab our alpha, we can just drag that alpha right out there. Um, an alternative to that, if you want uh, some kind of cool stuff, I mean, you can also, um, hold on, let's go into standard one here. We've got this alpha. If we go to a drag dots, we can just kind of tie, we can drag this alpha off, out. Now, if you want to get into the deco stuff, um, so if we go to B, D, uh, the deco brush, we can replace this alpha with our new one, and that'll kind of spin our alpha through here. Um, I'm trying to remember where that spin is. I think we talked about this last time. Um, it was, it's not twist. Was it twist? No, it was orientation. No, maybe spin center. Yeah. Okay. It's orientation, I think. So the spin rate is set at one. So if we set the spin rate to two, that'll kind of make it spin faster as I drag through. Uh, we can go to like 0.5. And you can change this from 2.5 to 1, and that'll just kind of spin very gradually like that. So you can kind of, you know, set up your own deco brushes here to kind of get you looking like. Uh, and I was, of course, always changing your Z intensity, or you can hold down Alt if you want to dig in your details. This, this alpha is a little busy for that, so that's probably why they have a simpler alpha, like those three dots that came in with it, this one. And we need to change this, so we'll do spin angle. And uh, spin center, if you want to offset that a little bit, we can do offset of one, and that'll kind of spin from the inside edge. If we do negative one, it'll spin, looks like it spins from the inside there over time. So a lot of really cool stuff you can do with that. Um, another thing you can do is you go into Projection Master, and we're going to do deformation. We don't, we're not going to paint colors here. Uh, we don't need to do normalize just because this is a flat plane here. And I can hit drop. And then now what we can do is under this alpha, uh, well, first let's go grab our simple brush here. And we can do a drag rect like this. And we can choose the alpha if we want to. And we can kind of drag out our shape like this. And the cool thing about Projection Master is if you hit W, you're now able to go in here and modify this shape here. Or you can change it from Z add to Z sub on the fly without having dropped it. Let's go back to Z add. Um, you can also do shift, shift S to save a screenshot. Yeah, you can save a screenshot. Did you shift F, shift S. And um, let's go ahead and pull these things down here if it'll let me. There we go. And kind of move these things around. Uh, and then when you're ready to go, and you can bring in the object as well. We'll do that in a second. Uh, you can go back into draw mode and then now uh, you can just drag whatever you want to. Um, let's go ahead and undo that. Another thing you can do is change this from drag rec to line, and then you can drag out a line of these alphas. So you can hold down shift and just drag out a line. And then if you go to your stroke menu here, I believe, um, is there a spacing? Yeah, so let's do a spacing of like 0.75. Now if you drag this out, it'll be you know a little bit more of a repeating ornamentation. And then you can change your, if you hit W, you can change your Z intensity, I think. Yeah. And that'll update on the fly, and then you can again do shift, oops, shift S, and drag out a copy here, like so. And then when you're ready to go back, you can just go out of Projection Master here, pick it up, and that will have applied it to your plane, just uh, taking those things. Uh, if we undo that, go back into Projection Master. I'm also pretty sure, instead of doing an alpha, we can just grab our actual geo here, so if I grab this one, yeah, we have actual geometry here. So you can just take the geometry that you made um, and then you can still do uh, W shift S and it kind of just treats it as um, kind of an alpha, but it's also geometry here. And what else can we do? We can do the as line thing, all that good stuff 
here. So if we go back into draw mode here and we'll just change that back to line, you can drag that out and you're, you know, get that look going and then hit W, shift S, and then you can drag these things out or drag them around up and down. I'm having a hard time grabbing. Let's grab what what am I trying to grab here? The middle one? No. It's constraining. There we go. And kind of drag that out. And then go out of projection master here. And that'll go ahead and pick that up. Now of course that's mostly gonna work well on a flat plane, more so than you know, something on a rounded plane, because it'll I mean you can turn on normalize and it'll kinda go around the uh, object, but uh, you can do that as well. Yeah, exactly. Grab dock. Um, uh, yeah, so move topology is basically, so when I go into my move brush here and I go, um, you know, auto masking and then uh, turn on topological, all that's doing with just the move brush is if you go to B, T, I'm sorry, B, W, brush, I'm sorry, move, B, M, um, there's a move topological in there. And basically what that does is turn on topological. Uh, for your move brush. Uh, if you want more move brush options, I think there's also under our brush here. Ba -ba -bum. Let's go to LM move. Yeah, there's some more uh, move brush options in here. And they're all they are is just turning on various options for your auto masking and some move brush stuff that kind of make those brushes interesting. Um, so yeah, now if we wanted to, we could take this ornamentation as well and we go ahead and show everything. This one this is the one that has thickness here. So here's our mesh. We can go ahead and do um, hit B. Uh, this is kind of heavy. You can decimate this down if you want. Uh, it's up to you. If you wanted to, you could decimate this. Just go to Z plugin, drag that over here. We'll do decimation master, pre-process current. Mm -hmm. And then we could just drop this down to like maybe 12K. And that'll give us a, a lighter weight brush. If we're going to do a ton of these things into a single brush, uh, it's probably better to keep it lighter weight. So now we can go to B, create insert mesh new. And then we can go back to, uh, let's go back to our concept sculpt here. And we can just tap this one. And now because it's an insert mesh brush, when you drag this out, it'll insert, but it's not going to wrap around the object here. So for that, we're going to go over here to our brush, transform alpha, let's go back to our brush. And under the brush modifiers here, you're going to see there is a projection strength. If you crank that up to 100, it will take whatever's underneath it and wrap your object to uh, that. So that's one way to kind of get that in there. Then we can just go through here. We could do a split mass points, which for you guys will be under subtool split options here. And now we've got two separate subtools here. So you got a little bit more control. You can go through here and like move this in or out or um, all that good stuff. Oh, another thing, if you want to control the height, let's go ahead and delete that. If we go to, uh, so you can see we have our new brush here. If we go to Z intensity and drop that down, that'll conform it as well as uh, make it thinner. If you have Z intensity 100, it'll go put the ornamentation on there, but it, it can only go so far. If you go in here to your brush modifiers and take your strength multiplier, we'll change that to two that'll actually make it even thicker. Now you're gonna see it's very particular. If you start going around the object, it's still gonna to wanna to wrap to those underlying surface normals there. So just be careful when you're doing that. Um, and if you want to have it not go into solo mode when you're dragging out insert mesh brush, um, I go out of solo mode. And then if I just wanna see this, I'm gonna turn the eyeball off and then select the nameplate. And then that way I can just have this drag out and I can kind of see it. So there's one way to have your insert mesh brush play nice. Um, if for some reason you want to just append or you don't want to use projection strength, you can change that back to zero. You can grab your object here. And then um, I think it'll work here. If we go ahead and split this, split mass points here, I'm gonna hit uh, BM, go to my BMM for my matchmaker brush. Now this one I can use to just kind of pull back through. And that'll go ahead and conform my mesh. It didn't do it on both sides. Sometimes with X symmetry and things like Z project brush and matchmaker brush, um, it can be a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is go out of X symmetry temporarily. Control shift, drag rect, hold down alt, get rid of that other one. Go ahead and delete hidden. And now I can use my matchmaker brush here. Now this one's camera controlled. So if I go over here and use matchmaker, it's going to project straight back from the camera. So it's going to do something like that. So I want to kind of orient my camera where I want to project. 
then project that back. And you don't have to project that harshly. You can change your Z intensity down to like, if you want 25% projection, you can just kind of slightly bend it. But for this one, we want it to conform completely. So we'll do that. And then if we want that on the other side again, we can go ahead and just do a quick uh, mirror, mirror and weld, and then hit X. And then we're back kind of where we started here. We can kind of just go through and modify this a bit like so. Uh, you can also play with your depth setting here. So if I go to B, grab our insert mesh brush and our depth. Right now it's sitting at an embed of six. If we change that to an embed of zero, that should go right uh, on the mesh here. And we'll go ahead and change our strength. Oops, strength multiplier is fine, I think, but our projection strength, we'll crank that back up. So this is gonna set it right on the surface here. Uh, this seems to be doing a little bit weird. I guess maybe if we do want that to work a little bit better, let's we can have it go out above our mesh a little bit. No, it still seems to be weird. Let me see, delete hidden. No, that's fine, that's fine. Hmm, strength multiplier back to one, projection strength down a little bit. Seems to be being a little bit weird here. Cause I didn't really change anything. I didn't turn on gravity or anything. Let me turn off X. Hmm, not sure why strength multiplier isn't working anymore, but you could go through and do that as well as uh, we're putting this on here, all that good stuff. So that would be the insert mesh brush or you can append and do matchmaker and that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, any more questions I miss? Um, does the dynamic bevel work with such complex shapes? It will, um, but yeah, you're, you're, um, it may not, let's turn projection strength off. We can just use matchmaker later. Uh, let's see, so if we go ahead, oh, you know what? I wonder if it's even projecting, that's why. So we have, if I go into solo mode here, it's using this thing, so I'll go ahead and delete that. There we go, there we go. That works fine. It was projecting to that weirdo thing in the back that I had, I, I didn't realize. So now we're back to normal. Um, yeah, matchmaker, projection strength, Z intensity. I'm trying to remember, there's so many different ways to do this stuff. Yeah, okay, so we can go ahead and do a uh, split mass points here. And then uh, if, let's see if we can do a quick group by normals here, there we go. So we can do a group, group by normals and get our front and then back. And then if we want to, since these side ones are kind of broken up by the normals, we can just uh, get rid of all those, hit control W. And now I've got our front back and side polygroups back. And then if we want to make these both the same, uh, mirror, is under your deformation menu. So you gotta go to deformation mirror and then geometry modify topology mirror and weld. So in my custom menu here, I just have mirror, mirror and weld. Um, if you go to the Pixelogic Classroom videos, they'll have um, ways to set up your custom menu. Also on my YouTube channel here, if you go to this playlist, we can go to, um, I think it's an intro to ZBrush part two. Yeah, this one has you can kind of walk through and do, it'll walk you through uh, custom hotkeys, custom interface, custom menu, all that good stuff. So very useful for that type of thing. Now, uh, if we were doing, um, like Axel was asking, the dynamic bevel, um, yeah, it should work. If you were to like, you know, crease PG, um, your results may vary because again, this is a decimated mesh here. Now what you could do with crease PG, you could go in here with your under the crease menu, you could bevel those things, but yeah, on this triangulated mesh, it doesn't work that great. So uh, yeah, I would zero mesh this thing just to get nicer topology, because um, yeah, going through here and beveling all these triangles is gonna be a nightmare. Um, I guess you could also frame this thing and then bevel with your curves, but that would be uh, probably another nightmare there too. So yeah, that's, that's a tougher one. But, uh, so now we got that, we got that ornamentation here. Uh, I th and I think that's how I did a bunch of this stuff. Let's bring this guy back and see if anything pops. Oh yeah, we were gonna talk about this type of thing as well. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Let's go back to our concept sculpt here. There we go. And we'll turn this all back on. And if we were gonna put some hair on here, and I would probably, I probably would just start out with a dynamesh here. So the squarey brush, I think that was brought up earlier, um, make sure clay tubes, there we go. Stroke, um, 
lazy mouse is on lazy step if you okay so if we go over here and we turn lazy mouse off uh, we're getting a, a slightly nicer stroke with um, our clay tubes let's do a B C B clay build up here uh, that one might be a little bit better and you can kind of go through here and start just blocking out your hair here so you kind of want those intertwining helixes if you do a Google search for let me see if I can find it gorilla oops gorilla zbrush fur there's a really good looking gorilla I forgot who posted this originally but um, if we view this image you can see uh, if you want this kind of sculptural look here uh, there's a cool little short demo video here it's a little bit um, a little bit older I guess Fabricio Torres and you can go through here and you can just kind of just build up your fur just like this and then you can go through and you can like H polish it down and use your standard brush and Damien's standard brush to go through and detail it um, in this particular case another thing you could do is just sculpt out a few or a, a handful of these things and make them insert mesh brushes uh, instead of trying to get these all to fit and kind of sculpting them side by side what could you what you, you could do is just create a bunch of curls and just different you know ways to kind of frame the mesh here and do these kind of type of curls here and That'll save you a little bit of headache if you were just kind of going in there and placing them. And then what you can do is, uh, so we go to like brush insert. Um, I guess we could just do one real quick. Let's make some curls here. Let's go ahead and grab our cylinder here. Make poly mesh 3D. And uh, we could just go ahead and dynamesh. Just turn off project, turn off project, turn off blur. I'm going to make this a really low resolution here. We'll just dynamesh this. All of those dynamesh settings are down here under geometry dynamesh, by the way. Right in here. So I turn off project, turn off blur, I crank my resolution way down, and we can just go in here with our clay tubes or our clay buildup, and uh, smooth brush here. I'm going to change this to smooth stronger, and just kind of smooth this thing down, and then we'll use snake hook to kind of, you can go through and kind of just curl this shape a little bit. You can use the twist modifier if you want, if you go into your deformation menu. You can kind of use twist to kind of get you some interesting shapes as well. Uh, you can do it in different axes. So if we do it across the Y here, we can kind of twist this around like so. So if we start with our base shape here, we can kind of start twisting this. And we'll use snake hook to kind of just pull this up and pull this back. And then we can kind of use twist to kind of get some of that stuff going. And then we can go in here again, just dynameshing as we go. And we can kind of start helixing I guess you could use the base helix primitive as well if you wanted to, but we're just kind of getting some basic shapes going in here. We can hold down Alt and dig in, and then clay brush build up to kind of build up these surfaces. Now, as we go, we can either increase our resolution of our dynamics or just hit Control D to add a subdivision history. Uh, before I do that, I'll dynamesh and then I'll hit Control D if I'm not making any major changes here. And then we can go in with our Damien standard brush or our standard brush. And we can kind of start, you know, carving in like so. And then we can hold down Alt and kind of carve out and just kind of. And I go, I'm going a little bit fast for the demo, so you'd probably want to take a little bit more time. And you could also use an insert mesh curve brush. God, we've, we've done this before too, where we've did the hair stuff. Um, so we're kind of retreading familiar territory from earlier videos that we've done on this channel. So I can go in here with H polish and I want to make sure not to hit Dynamesh unless I raise the resolution because I'll lose, I'll go back to my original resolution if I do that. So you can kind of go through here with uh, H polish and holding down Alt and getting these kind of cut in surfaces like this. And then if you wanted to go through and detail this up, Go ahead and do a quick uh, smooth deformation, or you can just use your smooth brush here. And then uh, we'll hit Control D one more time, and then we can either go in with our standard brush or our Damien standard brush, and we can just start adding in um, detail where it's appropriate. And that looks a little bit harsh. Let's go in our standard brush here. And we'll crank our intensity up just a bit and we'll make sure our lazy radius is up and that's under your stroke menu here your lazy mouse you can kind of go through here and kind of start pulling some of this stuff up or holding down alt to kind of dig in a little bit and 
And now if we have this thing, you could decimate it down if you wanted to, but you can hit B, create insert mesh brush new. And of course you'd want to make a whole library of those things and put them all in one brush. And then if we go back to our concept sculpt here, you could use this to kind of just insert as you go. And you could rotate this thing around and you could flip it around and you could even do random. You could cycle randomly through all that good stuff. And if you want to, you can also do, uh, we can kind of push, push this in here. You can do uh, W control shift and pop off a copy. And then you can use your move brush to kind of twist this around and kind of pull it up and move it around and change it. And then W control shift, another one. And again, use your move brush and kind of start twisting these things. And then if you want to, you can control drag, control drag again, that'll dynamesh everything together. And then you've got a base in here to start working with so that you could co go in here and just, you know, continue to use your Damien standard, kind of feather these things in or your clay build up your clay tubes and kind of just continue those shapes in there if you want, depending on how careful you were with your insert mesh brushes, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, H polish and all that good stuff. So it's another way. Um, so there's that. And uh, yeah, just go in here and sculpt the hell out of those uh, little sideburns there. Until I think all I did on this stuff was just kind of sculpt. You can kind of tell it's a little bit sloppy. It's not super duper tight. If we crank that up, it's it's pretty basic. But if you wanted to do a really nice uh, sculpt, you could certainly go the insert mesh brush route and then really take your time and make that stuff really, really tight and sharp. Um, let's see. Sorry. Um, okay, so we got this thing here. How do we do this thing? I think this again was just a sculpt that I ended up dynameshing out. And this would just be a radial symmetry thing and actually pretty simple to do. If you just wanted to do a bunch of stick-ons, let's go to our cylinder. Let's drag out a cylinder here, make it a polymesh 3D. If we want to tighten up these edges, you could go into your initialize uh, when it was still a primitive and crank up your divides. Uh, but in this case, what I'm going to do is just go to your crease menu here. By the way, if you're new to ZBrush and this is all uh, interesting but weird to you, just go to the Pixelogic website and you can do the free trial. It's like it's a 45-day trial. You can download it and give it a shot. Um, Pixel as a Classroom has some really good videos on it too. If you go to their YouTube channel or their website, the Pixel Logic website, um, as well as if you go to my YouTube channel, there's a Intro to ZBrush Part 1. I'll just throw this here. And that'll kind of walk you through kind of a linear progression of ZBrush uh, or ZBrush Core, if you haven't checked that out yet. It's kind of a simplified version of ZBrush, so it doesn't have all these options. Um, but it's a lot cheaper and um, it's a little bit more straightforward as far as just kind of doing basic sculpting and basic techniques. So there's a ZBrush intro to ZBrush core in there as well. Um, but anyway, so if I wanted to crease these, I can go to my crease menu and I can change my crease tolerance down to like, I don't know, less than 90. Hit crease. That'll go ahead and crease those edges where that transition is really abrupt. And now we can hit, uh, if we hit D, that's going to give us our dynamic preview. So I kind of make sure our creases are working correctly. Um, and then if I want to, I can hit apply. That'll apply those to actual subdivision levels. And then if I want to, I can also turn off project, turn off blur, um, and then dynamesh this thing. No, I don't want to keep subdivision levels here. And of course, dynamesh is down here underneath the geometry menu. Uh, now, in order to make that cool looking flower, I'm going to make use transpose move to kind of move that non-uniformly. And then I can go again back into our transform menu. And if we activate X and Y symmetry, for example, uh, it'll allow me to sculpt on the top and bottom of this thing. Uh, let's turn on local symmetry, and that'll make it local to this object here. So it'll do top and bottom here. Uh, you know, you can do X, Y, and Z if you'd like. However, what I'm looking for is I think Y symmetry with radial R turned on. So now I can go through here. Uh, if I crank that radial count up to 100, I can go in here with my trim and kind of trim this back and we can kind of start making a medallion or uh, any number of things here. We can hold down, you know, use a clay brush and kind of dig in or use the standard brush and kind of pull out and kind of get some interesting looks. And then you can go back in here with your uh, trim dynamic or your H polish and you can start getting some interesting stuff going on like this. Um, but if we're doing a more simplified shape, I mean, you can start with this kind of shape here. And if you want to, you can raise the resolution of that dynamesh just a bit. 
There we go. And you can use your Damien standard to cut in. You can use your H polish to polish. You can use your pinch brush. All of that stuff is still available to you. You're just sculpting. You're just sculpting in kind of like a potter's wheel radial symmetry here. Uh, but then if you wanted to do a simplified shape, you can drop this radial count down to eight now. And then you can use your move brush or your snake hook. You can kind of start pulling stuff in or bubbling stuff out or bubbling and wrapping stuff around and kind of getting some interesting shapes like that. Um, as well as you can use your clip brush and kind of go through here and start clipping stuff out around. Uh, if I was using my move brush, this is kind of, you know, kind of gives you a nice soft transition. So I would use it for that type of thing or inflate is another good one. You can go through here and start inflating around the edges. However, you can also go into your move brush here and I bring this up every time, but it's useful. So that's why I bring it up. Um, and then if you want to go to your sample, no, go to your curve here and turn on Accu Curve, and that'll pull into a point or pull out to a point as opposed to with Accu Curve turned off, it'll pull out to a rounded edge or pull into a rounded edge. So in this case, um, I can pull into a, a rounded to kind of a sharp angle here on the insides, and then I can turn off Accu Curve and use uh, just regular old move. I want to kind of bubble these things out. I can also go in here. We can um, control drag as we go. If it's still it's still a dynamesh here, and then we'll go into our Damien standard brush. We can kind of just cut in. Um, if I want to cut this straight in, what I'm going to do is hit W, and I'm going to pull a transpose line the direction I want to go in. Hold down control and tap that white um, knob at the end, and then go hit Q. And now I can just hold down Shift and just pull straight back out. And that'll give us like a nice pizza shape here, like so. Uh, and then if I want to, you know, go in here with our pinch brush and pinch these things down, or use clay brush to sculpt it out, or use our standard brush here, and we can go through here and kind of just start um, divvying that up. Now, I can also go through here, and as long as I think, let's bring our transform back here. We got a radial count of eight, so let's change that to like 24. And now we can still, I think, maintain our cut lines, but we can just kind of go in here and start detailing this stuff up uh, a little bit quicker, you know? So let's change our Z intensity here. And uh, I guess it's getting a little bit weird because yeah, as we go up here, it's gonna wanna continue our stroke that way. So maybe that's not gonna work so well. Um, yeah, we'll change that back to eight. And then just really quickly, we can just go through here and we can like bump this stuff up like so, and I'm not making obviously anything in particular. Uh, get get some reference out of some really good ornamentation. You can just kind of match that. They're, they'll be far better than me just spitballing um, ornamentation ideas. Uh, and then of course you can go in here with your clay brush and you can kind of just clay brush this out. Or if once you're done, you can just do an insert mesh brush and put, uh, you can start layering in different, um, objects together with this if you want. Uh, that might be kind of cool. So now when we're done with this, we can probably want to decimate this down. So again, Z plugin, decimation master preprocess current, and we will go to maybe 10K polys. Looks about the same. And you know, depending on where this is going to be seen, it could be way out here. Or if you're going to be up here, you probably want to decimate it a little higher. Uh, but this is fine. So we'll go uh, if we want to add this to our hair ornamentation, we can just click that one first and then click B, create insert mesh append, and then skip that note. So all that's telling you is that when you go to drag this out, you can go brush, insert, select your brush here. And then if you want to cycle between them, just hit M as in mic, and then you can switch back and forth between this and this, and then you're good to go. So. Uh, some more of those things here. Let's go back to that original there. Uh, everybody's still good. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay, so you can paint. Uh, I'm just going back to the reply on the YouTube channel for my last video. Um, and we're going to talk about, so you can paint an alpha, use the mask. Oh, yeah, we didn't extract, did we? Um, you can do that. Let's do that real quick. Another option here is to go into our polyplane, make polymesh 3D, geometry, turn off smooth modifier, divide this thing up. Uh oh, I hit divide too many times. Hold on just a second. 
Don't want to go too high here. Okay. Uh, if actually, five should be fine. Uh, hit X, and we'll do it. Go ahead and do it X and Y. There we go. So now, if you either mask this, uh, hold on. Dynamics turned off. Let's see. All of a sudden, ZBrush is really chugging. Let me see if I can clear some of this out. Hold on. Let's change our focal shift back to zero here. 61.25 million. Okay, that would be why. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Let me go drop back down to one here. Delete higher. Control D. Delete higher. Okay, for some reason, when I brought in this polyplane, I must have already been playing around. I think I'd already subdivided that one. Let me go ahead and grab a fresh polyplane because I think I grabbed the polyplane and continued to subdivide it uh, when I deleted lower here. I need to clean some of this out. But, okay, make poly mesh 3D. Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. Okay, now we're fine. Of course, we want to turn off the smooth modifier here. Sorry about that. Getting messy. And then, of course, activate symmetry X and Y. And now we can hold down Control, change our focus shift back to zero here. And uh, we can continue to do this. And we can also, if we need a little bit of help, go back in here and uh, grab this one here. And I guess for this one, we'll turn our focal shift back to negative zero. So we can start with this, and then we can go back to drag dots, and then we can make any changes that we want for our alpha here. Now at this point, you could use, you could fill this with a poly paint, and you could mask by intensity, or you can just use your mask that you're using. If you wanted to poly paint this off, what you could do is invert this, and then um, we'll just fill that with a red, and then unmask, and then you could just go to your standard brush, let's say, and use RGB, and you can just go in and paint out. So if you sample this color here, you can kind of paint out what you want. And you can have your lazy mouse either on or off. We'll go ahead and turn that alpha off, obviously. And then, uh, yeah, we can sample this color here. And we can go ahead and paint in what we want, and then sample this color and paint out what we want. And then once you have that, you can go to your masking menu. And you can do uh, mask by color, mask by intensity, hue, saturation. All of these should still work. If we mask by intensity, it'll do a fair job, I believe. And then we go to subtool here. We'll turn off our poly paint. Uh, we might need to do control alt tap to go ahead and sharpen this mask up. And that's also under your masking options here. So if we go down here to masking, uh, there's sharpen and blur. If you hold down control and tap, that will blur out. And of course, if you're going to do that, just tap inside here. That'll blur it out. Control alt tap will sharpen it up. Um, that's pretty cool looking. So once we have that, we can hit Control W, which is under Polygroup, Group Mask, Clear Mask, which is here. And now we've got uh, this one here. So we just polygroup this basically. And then we can isolate this polygroup here. We can delete hidden, which we might need to go up here to delete lower on your subdivisions. Delete hidden. Um, and if you wanted to zero mesh this, what I would do is polish these polygroup borders. One easy way to do that is go into your masking here, mask by feature border, control tap to invert that, and then use your deformation, like polish by feature or just a polish, and that'll go ahead and smooth out those borders a little bit. And that'll make your um, extractions, well, your extractions will do the polish automatically if you just keep the default settings. Um, but if you were to do zero mesh, it would help it a little bit. So go ahead and delete hidden there, that'll work. So let's again, we'll do another mask by feature border, invert that, and we'll polish by features that up. So zero mesh this if you want to. Uh, you can also, with anything that's just visible, you can go through here. You can you can extract a mask. So if we go here to subtool, uh, extract here. If we were to just mask in something, control, turn off RGB for a mask. I don't know why that was on. You can just mask something out and hit extract, and that'll go ahead and extract a mesh from that. It's just a preview. So until you hit accept, it's not going to keep it. Um, and if you go back through the videos, th we go through a bunch of extraction techniques and hard surface techniques using extraction. Um, or you can just extract the whole thing. And if this is looking good to you, you can hit accept. Now you're going to have your original mesh and your extracted mesh. The original one we probably don't need. So go ahead and delete that. So now you have our extracted mesh, front polygroup, side polygroup, back polygroup. And now you can use this as an insert mesh brush. Or you can go through here and sculpt on this thing if you'd like. Um, isolate. Now, of course, you're probably going to want to turn on X symmetry, X and Y, again, if you wanted to sculpt in symmetry here. 
and just go through here. Oops, turn out Z add, and just kind of start uh, using inflate brush or clay brush or whatever, and getting your ornamentation and all that good stuff going through here to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, cool, everybody's still good. Um, so Axel asks, would you ever use fiber mesh to create fur alphas? Sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I haven't actually done it yet. Um, I might be doing some creature stuff coming up that would require some fur techniques that I might have to look back into hair. But yeah, you could definitely do that. Just in, If it's an alpha for a card, what you'd probably want to do is just do hair fur on a plane and then capture that alpha depth. You know, again, just, you know, alpha grab dock or MRGBZ grabber. I have this thing tilted, so it's not going to grab perfect. Let's see. There we go. So there's our uh, depth grab. Uh, you could do that with fur as well as uh, getting, you know, you could do a key, a chroma key off the background color if you wanted to. Yeah, a bunch of different ways you could do that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll do, we can do some creature stuff. Creature stuff's fun. Uh, I need to get back in a swing of the creature things. I've been doing too many weapons lately. I've been weaponing it up. Uh, let's go back here and see if we missed anything so yeah these are just created using those same techniques oh yeah so we're gonna do um if you wanted to do like this type of thing dynamically we could just really quickly go through here let's create you know what this one doesn't matter let's just create a poly mesh primitive doesn't matter make it poly mesh 3d because i'm going to go down here to initialize and make it a q cube anyways and that's going to have a resolution of two on all sides so we've got the split down the middle. So let's make a quick insert mesh brush that we can kind of drag out and do ornamentation with. So I don't want to do this. So I'm going to hit W and I'm going to hit X to go across X symmetry here. And if we pull this out, now we have uh, this a little bit lengthened. I'm going to use my Z modeler brush BZM. Hover over this edge here. We're going to do bevel edge loop complete. And we'll just kind of make this three equal parts. So when I'm doing an insert mesh brush, it's going to have an anchor, an endpoint, and uh, a middle point here. So if I go to brush, insert, uh, curve, and then hit M, there's a couple of different uh, types in here. So if I just drag this out, this is going to be a hose. So you can just dynamic, you can go through here and just drag out these hoses here. And of course, you can make your own custom one, which is what we're going to do. If you wanted to change this, just hit M. And you can change that to a different type of hose or stitches if you want, or change this to like a bracelet link or these type of stitches or planks or shoulder straps, whatever you want to do. Make our brush smaller here and that'll make it a little bit smaller here. So you kind of see what that's doing. Now, again, if you wanted to see how they made that brush, just have it selected in here and then go to geometry, modify topology, and do mesh from brush there we go and now you can see if we turn on polyframe we've got this top poly group here which is red this bottom poly group which is purple and this middle repeating poly group which is orange so when i drag that out this is our anchor point this is our start point let's do this anchor point start point and then our repeating middle right here which is this part right here so we'll go ahead and do that undo that and now we're back to here so let's go ahead and make again our custom brush here and so what we're basically gonna do is mask this, control tap to invert that mask. I'm just gonna pull these with transpose straight down here. And then I'm also going to, since we're working in symmetry, I can just mask this back corner, invert that W and just pull this down. So now we've got kind of a ridge built in. Let's go ahead and unmask, there we go. So if I hit D now, it's gonna kind of just melt. You know, this, when I go to subdivide this later, it's just going to kind of melt. So what you can do is you can either crease this thing. So go again, go back to your crease menu that we were talking about earlier. Change that crease tolerance, turn that down, and it'll go through and just crease those angles for you. So now when I hit D, it'll keep all those angles nice and creased. Um, if you don't want them as harsh, you can go into dynamic and kind of play around with the crease smooth subdivision level. So we change this to four and then our crease level like down to two. And then we can do a uh, shift D to turn the dynamic off and then D again. It'll go through there and kind of, it's basically telling it, you know, crease everything to subdivision level three and then uncrease all and then continue to subdivide up to that smooth subdivision level. So that'll just kind of tighten it up if we change crease level to three, smooth sub D to four, that type of thing. Um, or if you want to skip all that um, altogether, you can just put in control loops. So 
uh, in this one, actually, this one would probably work with, um, if we go to dynamic and we'll change our smooth subdivision down to two, you can also do Q grid. So you can change, turn our Q grid up and then our coverage. So here you can kind of just dial in a little bit more hard surfacey uh, look like that. Or like I was saying, skip this dynamic completely and just go in here and uncrease all. And that's under your crease menu here and you can just put in control loops here so what I'm going to do is go to insert single edge loop and we can just tighten these up and again what I'm doing is if I hit D that's going to give us our dynamic preview and if I put in edge loops here as I pull towards the middle it's going to tighten uh, those edges up so I can just manually go through and just kind of I hit shifty to get rid of that so I'm just going to tighten these corners up just a bit here and then this bottom here I can go ahead and do this then if you also wanted to I could go to the back here and I can isolate. Let's just control shift, drag this whole back piece here, hit control W. Uh, I mean, it already kind of did this, but if you wanted to inset this back piece even more, I can do control shift S to shrink, control W to make that a poly group. And then I can use my Z modeler to do something like inset poly group all region. And then I could just inset uh, edge loops back here. But we don't need to do that. Now, this did mess up my polygroups here because I want three equal polygroups and now I've got like one, two, three, four polygroups here. So I'm just going to isolate this top one, control W, isolate this bottom one, control W, isolate this middle one, control W. And ideally you want these all about the same size. So now when we hit D, we'll kind of get that look. So now what we can do is we hit brush B, create insert mesh new. And now we've got an insert mesh, but we want to make it a curved brush. So we're going to go to our stroke. Uh, no, not stroke. Uh, yeah, yeah, stroke. <laughs> I feel like I'm having a stroke now. Where's my brain at? There we go, curve functions. And we're going to go to our, turn on our curve mode. And now when I drag this line out, it's going to make this a dynamic curve. And again, if we wanted to, we could hit, you know, BC brush curve tube or BI brush insert. Uh, where's our old, um, let's see, multi-mesh parts, brush insert, oh, there we go, army curve, and then we can hit M, and we can turn this into like a bike chain or a string of bullets here, and then we can just use that uh, as our enter multi-mesh curve, but we already have one here, so anything that has curve mode enabled, you can just go through and uh, apply that curve to it. Now you're going to see these things aren't welded, so we got to go over here to our brush menu. And we've got to go to auto man, uh, modifiers and we're going to turn on weld points. Now if we touch to update the curve, it'll weld our points together. You can also turn, try turning on stretch and our curve resolution to kind of smooth some of this stuff out. Uh, but it's a little bit resolution dependent. But of course, we're going to be using dynamic subdivisions and smoothing this. So it's not a huge deal. Um, any other curve options I want to? You can do as line if you want to just kind of pull that out to a straight line first and then kind of go in and bend it. So bend is where all that stuff comes in. If you want to make a duplicate of this, um, if we turn off bend and snap, we can hit five and that's going to save a, where are we at? Curve, 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 curve. Um, so here's snapshot, which is five, smooth is six. That smooths your curve out. But with snapshot saved, you can just hit five and we turn off bend and snap. So it's not bending or snapping. You just duplicate out, just keep hitting five. Um, if you hit six, watch the curve here it's going to smooth that curve out then you can tap to update it and then we'll hit uh, five and move this out and now you've got that kind of it just smooth that curve out so you can kind of do that um, if you want to space those out exactly what you can do is let's say we like this shape we're going to tap off to get rid of that curve uh, just tap anywhere on your object away from the curve there and then do or you can just go into curve functions and hit delete and then if we want to we can hold that control shift and pull up or and that's just constrained you can also just hold down control and just pull out in any direction that you want to and then once you've done that just hit one and that's going to go stroke uh, replay last is one so you can just kind of replay your last one and kind of get some ornamentation going like that but basically what this allows you to do is there's, oh yeah, there is one more thing we want to do. So we're going to go into, uh, we'll turn on intensity and size. I forget which one it is. And I'm going to go, so right now with intensity and size on, and we have as line on, let's go ahead and turn that off. Um, it's going from thin to thick. So I want to change this from thick to thin. And it doesn't have to go to a point. It can go to like just kind of a nub. You can kind of do that. That's probably a little bit better. 
And also, uh, depending on, uh, let's go ahead and turn bend and snap back on. So we turn bend and snap. Well, actually, snap we can probably leave off. Snap, so it's going to snap to the underlying surface. So now we can kind of move this around. Now I can coil these pretty tightly. Uh, where that is controlled is down here under the brush modifiers, I think. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, it does. Max bend angle. So if I change this to 90, um, that's going to make it so I can really coil these really tight. If you're doing a, like railroad tracks or something, you probably want to change this max bend angle to zero, and that'll keep these things. Uh, it'll only allow you to kind of bend it so far before it kind of magnetizes and pushes out away from you. So uh, we've got that going, and now we can probably just change that back to 45 there. There we go. So now we can use this for ornamentation as well. So if we want, if you want to save this brush for later, you can just go into your brush here, go hold down Alt and say select icon, and let, or you can just select your own icon if you want, but that'll capture what's on your thing here. You go to brush, save as, and you can just throw that into your ZBrush 4R7. Um, if you want it to always show up every time you start ZBrush up, go to Z Startup Brush Presets, and then you can assign a hotkey to it, and it'll always be there every time you start up. But if you're only going to use it every once in a while, you're going to go to your ZBrushes and just throw that. Do we have an ornamentation or a decoration? You can just make a new folder in here if you want. We'll just place it in Deco here. We'll call this Test. So then if we hit the comma key here and go to Brush, ABC, Deco... There will be a, a, there it is, there's our test brush. And you can always have that available to you. So, to go back, let's grab um, our plain 3D here and let's make sure if we do have, so we already had five subdivisions on there. That's why I was slowing down tremendously. Um, we don't need all those. So, let's go ahead and delete higher here. So, now if we wanted to use our new brush, let's turn that alpha off. You can drag that brush out. And then again, you can just tap off if you want to, or before you tap off, you can go through here. Now the blue radius is what's controlling how much of this curve you uh, you change. So if, you, if you're hovered over the curve and you hit S, that'll make the blue size bigger. If you go away from that and now your brush size and you hit, you tap S or you go up here to draw size or you hit space bar and go to draw size, um, that's going to increase the thickness of that. Um, another thing is, yeah, so we're dragging this off. We can continue to make this longer just by See that curve snap distance, that little rubber band sticks out? As long as that attaches, you can do that. You can also go through and update the shape, I think, if you just kind of drag through. Uh, maybe not. Let me see. Sometimes I can get it to work. Sometimes not so much. I think maybe I'm dragging too, too dragging through too far. Um, or maybe I need to go to a terminator here. There we go. Anyway, you can go through here and modify this. Change your brush size. Change your um, modifier size if you want to do more or less. Uh, your curve resolution might update that, your size will update that, and basically you're just going through here and doing ornamentation. So if you're doing ornamentation stuff, um, if you want to set that in deeper as well, you can go to your depth and just drop that down to embed of like zero. And then if you tap that, that'll update that. So now it's sitting uh, right, embedded perfectly right on there. You can tap off and then start doing more ornamentation here. We'll tap off and then just do more. Uh, again, if you wanted to use this uh, curve that you have and you already kind of like it, just hit five, that'll do a snapshot. And then you can go through here and just kind of modify this one uh, slightly from it. Hit five, modify this one slightly. Oops, I forgot to change the brush size over here. There we go. Modify it slightly. Or if you want to turn off bend altogether, you can just uh, go back in here, turn off bend, hit five, and then you can just drag out copies like so. And then when you're ready, you can uh, you can hold down. So all these are separate groups here. So you can hold down control shift and then go ahead and split hidden or, you know, split the similar parts or whatever you want to do under your subtool split menu. And then when we isolate that here, you can hit D and that'll give you your dynamic preview. And then you can see you're getting a much nicer result here. And you can go back in with your move brush or whatever, or go in here with your inflate brush. You can dynamesh this down. We can inflate these tops here and we can dynamesh them together if we want or if we don't want to, we can just apply those dynamic uh, subdivisions and then you can just go through here and start sculpting. Turn off that alpha there. You can go through here and start sculpting this stuff and kind of cleaning it up or H polish, any of that stuff you want to do. 
to make make it as fancy uh, as you want. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, easy way to do cutaway environments like this, basically. Um, totally. That's just doing a bunch of prop work. And then for your bricks, you would do just, you know, like we talked about last time. I think it was last time. Was it this? It was either on my, no, it was my channel. We did a bunch of rock stuff. Um, you could tile, I mean, on, on, honestly, it's just, you would do the back walls and just kind of have them sitting there. Um, you could also do like a whole room and then invert the normals, but that's kind of a pain. So um, yeah, this would just be a ton of prop work and then just make two walls, put them together, make a floor, make a little demon pig. And then, uh, yeah, that would be, that would be uh, pretty fun and easy. Uh, speaking of, yeah, so we did a bunch of rock stuff. We can go with some rock stuff on, on this channel if you'd like, and uh, we can do some of that. So yeah, we can do that. Uh, what tablet do you use? I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium tablet here. I prefer the tablet to the Cintiq just because it's a little bit more portable. So when I go do demos or go to class and teach, um, it's uh, it's a little bit easier on me, and some for some ergonomic reasons. But um, yeah, and they're and the price they're not, they're not expensive, but relatively speaking, I mean they're not cheap. But um, you can also buy them used. They're pretty robust. So maybe if you find a good used one, might be good. Uh, any tips for character creation? Oh, so many. Um, there's a ton here. And uh, yeah, and I, I mean, we have a character. We, I kind of go off on tangents on this channel. I need to go back to our, our character that we're making here. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to give ZBrush a little rest. And we're going to go ahead and just shut down. ZBrush real quick, and we'll just fire it back up. Uh, but you can also do preferences, initialize, I think, and that'll uh, let me see. That'll kind of clear it out as well. There you go. Yeah, initialize ZBrush. That'll just bring it back to your initialized state. Uh, and that can kind of clear it out. Um, but for the room, it would basically just be like drag out any primitive here, and again make poly mesh 3D. Go to initialize Q cube, and then it would just be a matter of uh, we can go ahead. And we'll do use our Z modeler delete polygroup all or polygroup island. And we'll delete that one, that one, and that one. And then we'll go ahead and flip. So there's our room here. And then we can just do Q mesh all polygons and Q mesh that out. And then we'll go ahead and flip display properties, flip there. And then we've got our back walls. Now, of course, if you wanted to do these as separate walls, um, it'd be pretty easy. All you would do is before extracting this, go ahead and do a subtool split group split and now each one of those poly groups is now an individual mesh here so then you could go through and do um, well first let's do a quick save and then we'll go to quick save and we'll load that last one up and now we can do a Q mesh poly group ball we can pull this back and then flip now because we just did that we can just apply we can just tap to apply that like so and then we can just do a quick flip and flip so there's our walls in there and then if we wanted to make these rocks um let me just point you guys to that oh i have a whole separate playlist so here's a bunch of stuff about rocks in this one uh, we basically go through a bunch of different rock uh, sculpting techniques and we use a bunch of different techniques that you can do to kind of get that and brushes to kind of get that um i'm trying to find it where'd it go oh there we go yeah to kind of get that rocky look. And if you wanted to do like bricks underneath plaster, we could do that a little bit. So let's go ahead and do a turn off project, turn off blur. Dynamesh resolution is a little bit low. So we'll crank that up a bit. And then we could do, I mean, you could tile bricks in here. So many, so many different ways to do this stuff uh, really quickly. Or you can use surface noise and get some bricks in there. Uh, I'm going to do quick and dirty here. So I'm going to turn up our lazy radius and then turn it off and we'll do Uh, actually, maybe we should use damn standard here. So I'm going to go through here. Well, I guess we can turn lazy radius back on. Hit, I'm just tapping L to turn that on and off. So we're going to do some bricks for this wall. 
And again, depending on the final result, if it's just going to be seen from a distance or you're just doing concepty stuff, you know, you could always make a brick wall and use it later. It's kind of up to you. But we can just kind of go through here and I'm just dialing in some bricks here. Super quick and dirty, obviously. And you can use nano tile that we've used before, the nano tile plugin that Joseph Dress made. It's really good. Um, that's also on my YouTube channel there. I just linked if you go to the playlist there's a nano tile playlist i did and we made some bird seed so i've got some brick here oops i guess we need to do the other offsets here and if you wanted to in this case here you could also go in here to your morph target morph target store a morph target and then you could just go all the way through here and here and then I guess the rest of this way here. And then you can go to BMO to get your morph brush here. We'll turn on Z add up to 100. And then you can morph out what you don't like. So that's another option you can do. So here we're going to skip. And then we're going to skip. And then we're going to skip. And then we're going to skip. I like about right. Okay. So we've got our brick sitting there. And then we can take, um, let me see, let's show everything else. And actually, before I did this, I probably wanted to duplicate that off. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that off. And I'm going to take, so here's my brick sitting there. I'm going to take this one and drag this all the way back to where we first just dynamesh this thing. So now if I go out of solo mode, you're going to see we have bricks sitting right underneath this. So I'm going to take this brick subtool here, and I'm going to deflate this like negative 2 maybe. Or is that a bit much? Going to transparency mode. No, that's about right. And then we can just go through here on this one. And we can use this, like we can use clay tubes, clay buildup. We can kind of just go back to the brick there. Um, you can also use your layer brush, BL layer brush. And let's go ahead. If we don't have a morph target stored, we can just kind of slowly uh, chew. If we're going to solo mode here, you can hold down alt and that'll just kind of build up in layers and just kind of chew back through there. You can also, if you store a morph target with a layer brush, it'll just maintain that one single distance there. So in this case, we're not going to store, we're going to delete our morph target, and we're going to change our Z intensity down a bit. And now we can just kind of start digging through here. You can also change this to a square alpha if you want, although layer brush, that might not be the best. We'll change it back to a circle. And we can kind of start digging back through and kind of flaking through to the underlying stuff here. Um, also, if I go to my brush here, we have some cool brushes that um, let me make sure if I have this set up here. Let's see, Twitter. Make sure I'm not giving you guys misinformation. So I got some rock brushes here. Let's go to the detailing, miscellaneous polish brushes here. And where I got these ones, these are just a collection of rock brushes I got um, from Pablo Gomez here. I can send you guys to his... Um, let me see, let me see, where is it at, where is it at? Uh, there we go. So I got these rock brushes, these are really cool brushes too. It's um, from ZBrush Guides. There's a bunch of free guides and stuff on here and then those, those brushes uh, that I have here on there, if you wanna check those out. And you can do, like if we double click, not the PNGs, but the actual brushes here. You can kind of go through and just kind of start stamping in uh, detail. Uh, if we hit the comma key here, I haven't gone through a lot of these just yet. I don't do a ton of rock sculpting at any given time, uh, but there's some really cool brushes in there if you wanna check them out um, to kind of go through there and kind of just give you some kind of rocky looks and stuff like that. And you can also use just a regular brushes like if we go to our brushes here and we use like our Let's say mallet fast is always a good one to kind of go through here and um, you can hold down alt and let go of alt and you can kind of start chewing this stuff up and then dynamesh as you go. As well as um, my other favorite brush trim. Curious trim. Um, trim smooth border with a square alpha. You can hold down alt and this that'll really kind of go through here and start chewing up some of this stuff. And you can, there's tons of crack brushes you can do. I tend to just do like a standard brush with a high intensity with no lazy mouse on. And then you can just, again, if you have a tablet, you can hold down Alt and then, um, let's go ahead and Dynamesh a slightly higher resolution there. You can go through here and kind of start 
um, just making cracks and you're going to get going thick to kind of thin and kind of spider webbing that out. If you wanted to make your own custom one, we did this on my channel too. It's kind of a fun one. Just real quick, plain 3D, make polymesh 3D. We need some subdivision geometry. We're going to turn off smooth, divide this up, and then we're going to make our own custom alpha here. So we can kind of just do standard brush to kind of dig in. And then, you know, we can kind of feather this out and kind of get a, uh, like a Todd McFarlane <laughs> bullet hole going in here, maybe like, like a comic book kind of bullet hole. So we're just kind of going to go, go through and like something hit this thing and had an impact, left an impact crater behind. So you can kind of go through here and do this and kind of yeah, again just feather these things out and crisscross them over and then what you can do is you can grab this alpha so again we'll just use our mrgbz grabber that's easy enough so go to edit mode is to drop it to the canvas mrgbz and then yeah use your space bar to kind of move this around hold down shift to constrain it to a square capture that alpha we don't need the texture here and then we'll go back to our room here and then again, standard brush, clone. Uh, so we're just working, we don't change our standard brush settings. And then we change that to drag rec, grab our alpha. Now by default, um, you're going to see number one, it kind of fades at the edges. So we change our focal shift down to negative 100. And number two, it also has a really distinct um, edge around it. So we're going to go to our alpha, modify. And our mid value here, if we had gone up and down in our alpha, we'd probably have to dial this number in a little bit. And you just basically, you know, change this number until it goes from out to in. In this case, since I just went down, I can just change the mid value to zero. And now we have, you know, a little alpha. Or instead of drag wrecked, if you want them all the same size like they were bullet holes, instead of trying to go like, okay, bullet, bullet, oops, I made that one too big. Just change this to a drag dot and that'll make it your brush size. So then you can really quickly go through here and just pull that up. Of course, you're gonna want enough resolution to maintain your detail. So you can hit control D or subdivide it a higher resolution. And now you can kind of go through here and do that kind of stuff. Um, cool, cool. Yep, it's another good one and uh we're good we're good okay so yeah exactly little bullet brush here and you know okay so that's another thing you can do so if you wanted to drag out a string of bullets what you could do is change this to a dot stroke and then go over here to a couple different options you can go to your lazy mouse turn that on your lazy step if i change this to one that's going to kind of go through and kind of start putting bullets along a line here you could also possibly we can try doing a maybe turning roll on under modifiers and that'll kind of roll through the alphas this is something i would use more for stitches but you can kind of just kind of all that good stuff if you want them closer together that's just a simple matter of changing your um lazy step to like 0.75 or if you want to space them out more obviously make that make that a little bit different there cool everybody good let me close some of this stuff down here okay 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 and uh, let me look back through here. Okay, so we talked about alphas and extracting. We split the ornamentation onto its own subtool. We did that. Uh, matchmaker brush, projection brush, we kind of fit that already. already. Um, you can, okay, that's another good point. So also, I've, and I kind of did this for one of my channels too. So if you go to, I can just link you guys there really quick. So I did a, um, and it's kind of buried in here is the only reason I'm bothering to go and find it instead of just telling you where it is because honestly I'm not exactly sure where it is. It's under loomy questions. That's right. Um, I did a decorative whale using this technique. So I'll link you guys that. There we go. Um, so there's a decorative whale. So that, now this whole thing is basically if we load in, uh, okay, we'll just hit the comma key here. And we'll go to brush, I'm sorry, tool, and we'll just grab a default head here. Actually, you know what? Let's grab the dog. We got the dog here. And then if we subdivide this up and just get a control D a couple times, and then hold down control, go to drag rect, and we'll drag in. Let's go ahead and go back to our alphas here. Stencils. And we can just grab a, you know, one of these stencils here. And then hold out control and drag that out. Oops. 
put the stencil in there, not on my standard brush. There we go. Um, looks like we need a little bit more resolution. There we go. Uh, again, hold focal shift to negative 100, so it's nice and clean. And now you can go ahead and extract. Uh, is this not on X? Yeah, let's turn on X symmetry here. That's going to drag all the way through. Now you can hold down Control, go to Brush, and then turn on Auto Masking and turn on Back Face, and that way it'll ensure it doesn't do any, it doesn't go through your back face here. Um, so now that we have this on there, you can hit uh, Control W and that will go ahead and pop that off. Uh, if you wanted to, I mean that gives its own poly group, you can also just um, either mask that, so we can mask that, bring everything back and you can do your subtool extract through masking and that will extract those shapes off. You can also do it through visibility, so if I isolate that and then extract, it will do it through visibility. And then if you hit accept, that will go ahead and throw out your own uh, sub tool here and then you can clean that up any number of ways for example we can do uh, polish by features and that'll just kind of keep those edges nice and crispy so now we've got that shape kind of extracted off the dog um, if you wanted to we can bring the dog back here and the dog still has the poly group and the masking here so you'd want to unmask and then um, you still have your poly group available to you if you wanted to inset this into the dog. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. You can do it through Dynamesh and just do a Dynamesh subtraction. You can also go through here and you know, we can do a delete lower and you know, we can do, uh, we can isolate this thing. I'm going to just do a quick, um, we'll go ahead and mask the border on this one as well. We'll go masking, border, invert that mask and they'll do a polish by features just to kind of um, clean up those edges there. So now we can isolate this, mask, control click the mask, bring everything back, control tap to invert that mask, or you can hit W, control tap a poly group, and that'll go ahead and do that. And then you can do control shift, drag in, and that'll bring in, that'll drag in edge loops. So that's just a little bit of transpose modeling. And then you can kind of just stamp that through the dog if you want. That kind of thing. So yes, 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 all that stuff. Um, you can also bring it in with noise as a surface noise here. So if we go to, actually, let's bring our alpha back here. And I guess we could tie all that through there. We don't really, I don't know if we have UVs on there. We'll just do this really quick. Export this to our desktop here. And then if we have this one, we can go to surface, noise. We can grab our own custom alpha here. And then we can go to alpha scale and we have um, noise scale we have noise turned on that kind of rocky noise we're mixing that in so we're going to go ahead and turn that off and then um, let's go ahead and crank that down maybe let's change the strength yeah this one might not work so well because we're, again we're doing 3d projection so you can kind of see the alpha kind of coming into the object here um, you can also use the noise plugin. So you can go to noise plug and you can tile snake skin and uh, cheetah sp spots and checkerboard and camouflage, all that good stuff there if you want to. Or bricks. Bricks is in there as well. Uh, it's kind of up to you. And you can just apply that as surface noise. Oops, looks like I turned off noise plug. There we go. Uh, if we like this, we can hit OK. And again, this is just applied via. Uh, it's not on our mesh. If we turn noise off, it's kind of a just a dis displacement preview. So you can always go back in here and edit this and change the strength up or down, like so, and hit OK. If you if it's in a place you don't want it to be, you can just hold down Control and mask it out, and that way it won't apply it to your surface. Um, but again, it's just a displacement. If you did want to apply it to your surface, you have to just hit Apply to Mesh, and that'll go ahead and apply this to your mesh here. And then uh, before you do that, actually, it might be useful to go into your layers here, make a new layer, make a morph target, and then hit apply to mesh. So that way what you can do is you can take your layer here and you can kind of dial in if you wanted to like really over crank it or really kind of maybe do the opposite under crank it um, as well as so you kind of dial that in. And then once you're happy with that, you can hit bake all. And then you can also go through here with your morph brush and you can do again BMO. And you can either morph this out or you could do switch and then that just switches your morph target with the deformed mesh and then you can just morph brush in where you want it to go. So you can kind of just morph this in. So that's another kind of way to do 
directly on your object, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah. So, I don't know. That's a couple different techniques. And if you wanted to also, well, now we talked about that, where you could, you know, do your custom brush and do the ornamentation on a flat plane, and then you could either capture that as an alpha. You can bring that into Projection Master, and you know, tile that however you want. You can make it into an insert mesh brush, and then wrap it with um, all those techniques we've already talked about. So how are we doing on time? We got about 20 minutes left. Any other questions? It's not really enough time to get into anything too, too deep, but I think we covered ornamentation pretty well. Um, we can also go back. Let me see. We can all those preferences initialize. Speaking of the character stuff, let's go ahead and go back to our streaming. ZBrush female, I think, is the one we're working on. So we have this tech suit here we're working on periodically. Uh, so if I go out of solo mode here, drag her out, hit F, and turn all this stuff back on. You can kind of see where we're at with this character here. So we're kind of getting her concepted in, and we're just basically going through and rebuilding all of her tech suit stuff. So I hit D here, that'll give us a dynamic preview. So we've got all of this stuff kind of rebuilt and going. We're kind of detailing this glove out. So if I go here, turn this off, and now uh, this is our original concept sculpt, which I'm pretty sure we don't need anymore, but we'll keep it around, I guess, just in case. And then we can start turning some of this stuff on here. There we go. Yeah, so this is the glove we're working on right now. It's kind of going through, and we rebuilt this and detailed it out, and now we're kind of just building this stuff up and around. And um, let's see, auto mask by polygroups, RGB, Z add. And oh yeah, I have a mask on there, I always forget. So whenever you're doing something and it seems like it's not working, just turn on view mask and I actually masked this out so I could go through here with inflate. And uh, there we go. So I can inflate some kind of piping along the edges here. You can also just do a frame mesh here. So if we want to, we can control shift click this and we'll go into our stroke menu. And we will say, actually, is it gonna let us? Cause we have, do have subdivision history. I'm gonna temporarily delete lower. And now I'm going to do uh, curve functions. I'm going to frame this border. And now I can go to BC brush curve tube. And I can just click right along there. We can make the brush size bigger or smaller. Uh, this is actually pretty good. And then I'm going to just tap off away from our mesh here. And then we'll just do a quick split mass points. I'm going to alt tap this one and hit reconstruct to get our subdivisions levels back. And then we can alt tap this one. And now we can do like an inflate or a deflate. We'll do like negative one kind of thin that out maybe a little bit or you can just manually go through and hold down shift and just kind of thin that out as well just by averaging the vertices there if you want a little bit more control I suppose and that'll just kind of give you your piping along that border edge there like so and then you'll feel free to sculpt that in you add little wrinkles to that if you'd like all that good stuff kind of get get your details going and then go through here with your Damien standard and again we have subdivision history so we're able to go back up and down through our subdivisions here and on this one let's use our standard brush here crank up our Z intensity hit L bring that down and now let's turn off preferences edit line cursor to surface there we go and kind of just start dialing in our details like so and making this whatever kind of material that we want and building the stuff up as we go and you know if I am doing fine detail cloth work I'm probably gonna wait till I'm at a higher subdivision level before I start doing stuff like seams any kind of seams I want to cut in because if I do it now and then hit control D I have to go back in and kind of clean this up and then maybe go in with my pinch brush and then maybe go in with my standard brush and kind of do that kind of stuff it's kind of a pain um, and also if I want to do like micro wrinkles along the side here, I can make our own custom alpha and just kind of roll that along the surface, which we've talked about before. We can kind of do that and let's go ahead and fix this a little bit. Just use our move brush there and just kind of pull that down in there. There we go. That'll work. And if we wanted to put that piping inset a little bit it would just be a matter of doing that visibility 
um, shrink control shift S and control shift X to expand and that will and then you could frame that border so if you want to do this is one of the things we did on the, if you go to the pixel logic classroom uh, I did a video on panel loops and that's basically a way to kind of inset rivets because you don't want rivets right on the panel border you kind of want them inset a little bit so you just you know take this one here and then do control shift S to shrink and just back that off and then frame that border and then it'll be inset there and kind of do that. Um, go away Thunder Bunny. Thanks for showing up and yeah we're just kind of winding down here we got about 15 more minutes left and we're just kind of going through and we're back to our glove so we've kind of gone from ornamentation to a little bit of character stuff here and anything else we want to do here we kind of went through and did some of this stuff here which I'm probably gonna end up deleting that I don't know about that but uh, we kind of put these buttons in here last time with Z modeler brush and let's go ahead and just pop in some of these wrinkles here and I do have some reference I was looking at some glove reference so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna launch up quadro uh, if you want to use this it's just a reference viewer that um, let's see run as administrator here and then I should be able to just load up. Um, yeah, I can go in here and like, I always have uh, presets saved so I can open recent. So here's some preset uh, reference that I have. And then that just pops it up on my other screen here. And there's hotkeys for that. And then I got all this stuff up on my other screen. I can kind of just dial through and just kind of look at that stuff that I have already set up there like so. And uh, yeah, just kind of looking at that. So this stuff has kind of piping on there. If we want to flatten this piping out, we can go in there with the trim brush or trim dynamic, I should say. You can just go right along here. You could also put a curved strap in there if you wanted to. Um, it's kind of up to you. Sometimes they can get a little bit twisted here, but I'm just going to kind of go through here and kind of flatten this out just a bit. Right along that surface here and again if we did want to kind of crimp these edges here and I can also go into solo mode just to kind of get the other stuff out of the way if it's getting in your way along these tight spots here And then uh, I guess we'll do a custom alpha real quick and we'll go through and kind of maybe pucker along the seam border here. That might be kind of a fun thing to do. And some we've done a bunch of times too. So it won't be anything new for you guys if you've gone through the channel before, but still useful. So we'll go in here and use our move brush here. So now let's go ahead and really quickly just make a quick pucker brush here. And uh, I probably should have one saved by now. So make poly mesh 3D, W, turn on poly frame. We can just shrink that down just a bit. And then I can go into my Z remesher. So geometry, Z remesher. And then we'll just do like half adaptive size down to zero. And we'll just keep hitting that. And that'll get us nice even quads here. And then we can hit control D, turn on our smooth modifier. Subdivide that up a bit. And then again, our standard brush here with our lazy radius on. And we can just kind of just go through. Actually, let's drop that down to like some of those little four, maybe even three. Yeah, there we go. And let's kind of do like a crimped pucker brush here with a smooth, stronger. Oops. There we go. And then if you want to subdivide up as you go to kind of just dial in some more details here, you can. You can use H polish and all that good stuff as well. And now when we got this ready, we'll edit, drop it to our canvas, and then we'll go to our MRGBZ grabber. And we'll just grab that height information here. You're using spacebar to kind of just pull that around. So our texture, we don't need. Our alpha, we do need. So now we can hit control N and then go back to our glove here. Now this one's going to require a bit of detail, so I'm going to hit Control D one more time just to again just increase our subdivisions here, and then uh, we'll go to our standard brush and we'll clone it off, so we don't mess up our standard brush settings. Dot stroke is fine. Uh, if we put in the alpha now, it's just going to drag that alpha through, so we're going to need to go to stroke and turn on roll, 
and now it'll kind of drag through that puckering here. We'll, we'll decrease our Z intensity there. And now we can just kind of go through and you know what, also, let's see if the intensity is still a bit much. And also it looks like if we go to stroke, lazy step of one maybe, there we go. And then we can just kind of dial that in along the sides to get some like crimping on the sides. You can also do it to the actual piping if you wanted to kind of wrinkle that up as you kind of went across there. So kind of dial that in. Actually, let's go back to our lazy step. We'll put that down just a bit and we'll decrease our Z intensity here like that. So you can kind of just roll through some kind of wrinkle detail here. Um, but I mean, I guess we're not really ready for that level of detail just yet on these particular gloves. Although I know I get, we're, we're getting close. I don't know how fancy uh, you guys want to go with your gloves here at this point. Uh, I'll probably just go in here with Damien Standard and again just kind of start putting some of this stuff in here and wherever you know things oops let's go ahead and not turn hold down all other Damien Standard. There we go. So you can kind of dig in and then use our standard brush or our clay brush to kind of pull out. And you can kind of just put in seams and wrinkles and all that stuff where you might see the fabric kind of compressing through here. Especially through the piping area here. And if you don't like the piping, you can always get rid of it. You can just be a you know, you can always just turn off the visibility there and kind of get rid of it and see if you want just a cleaner look because the piping does make it look a little bit clunky, I think. I mean, it's kind of an interesting detail, but maybe doesn't quite work in that particular formation. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And it's just a little bit cleaner there. And then again, as we're subdividing this thing up, we can go through here and just kind of indicate that, you know, cloth is bunching up around these things here. And if you need to, you can always go into transparent with ghost on, and that will allow you to sculpt through the object as opposed to if you have ghost off, it'll kind of hit the object there or transparency off completely. You can kind of see it's affecting our mesh just a bit. So go back to subdivision level four here and kind of just start building this up a bit. And you can also just mask and inflate too. So we can go into transparency mode, hold that control. You can kind of go through here and mask underneath it. Let's turn on Ghost as well. Make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Like this. And then Control Alt. And then you can tap to invert that. Now, in this particular case here, if you hold on Control Shift and isolate this, do Control Shift A, you're going to see this is a pretty thin double sided mesh. So if you want to make sure that you're not sculpting through your object and really just kind of pulling through, make sure you go to your brush auto masking here and turn on back face. And now when you're doing, and it's not global, so you have to do it for all your brushes, but now when you're brushing through, it'll leave this alone. Uh, same thing if you hold on control, turn on back face, and now when you're masking this out, it's not gonna go through. And then you can invert that mask, go out of solo mode here, and now you can just kind of use our inflate. That's gonna be under your deformation menu. And you can just kind of inflate that up a bit. If you wanna soften that transition, again, just control tap. That'll kind of blur that out. And you can also inflate decimal point points, so like 0.25. You can go through and inflate, or like I was doing earlier, just use your standard brush. There we go. And smooth. And let's change that intensity down just a bit. And we'll turn that back on. Oh, that's our concept sculpt here. Um, oh, yeah. Control Shift Tap to bring everything back. So, again, these are all just panel loops here. Control Shift A. So, we've got those different pieces kind of set up. And our concept sculpt, I don't think we really need. Uh, I kind of just keep this in there for reference until I really don't need it anymore. If you want to kind of look at what you're doing, just do a shift S and that'll save a poly group, or I'm sorry, it'll save a um, snapshot. So you can kind of go through here and kind of look at that. And then we'll turn that off. And now we've got our glove we're working on here. So we kind of have our reference sitting up there of our original mesh. We don't need that. There we go. So we've got this here. Um, again, I'm not sold on this necessarily, but I guess we'll leave it in there for now. And we got that kind of embedded. Go in here with our move brush, kind of pull.
pull that in just a bit, then Alt Tap to select those subtools, move those in, and just go through here and just use our standard brush. Unmask, there we go. Yeah, just drop that Z intensity down, turn our lazy radius back on. And if we want to do more uh, fanciful things, so this one is just uh, Z modeler with cr uh, dynamic subdivisions turned on, so there's no actual subdivision. So I can use this one to go BTO or topology brush. And then for like the finger nubs, we can go through here. And you know, if, if you're in a space tech suit and you want to use your smartphone in space, you're going to need to have it know that you've got a little rubber finger there. So we can go ahead and put those in there. We can go ahead and just go through here here and then we'll just cross over here to here and then we're just going to drag through and get some really quick topology going here so you can kind of just dial in that little thing here now if we tap um, it's going to give us a geometry thickness based on our brush thickness so if you make our brush size really big and then tap away it'll make it really thick uh, if we make it really if you turn it down to one it should just be a flat plane so i'm going to keep it at like two and then we'll do a split mask points and now we see if we do shift D, there's our actual geo. D gives us our dynamic preview and we can just go through here. We could sculpt it or just kind of move this thing around. Now we've got like a little finger pad here. If we wanted to, we could also say we want to like do a, do a pattern on here. So we can go through here and we can like split a point and go through and split this one. Uh, that one's going to be kind of a pain, isn't it? Here, I probably should have put in another one here. Now, once you hit split, you can just go in here and just dial in uh, that split difference. So if we go back to the back here, we can go split, split, and then you can just use Q mesh, polygroup all, pull those back. And this one might be behaving a little bit weird because it's catching some weird stuff. So I'm going to do polygroup island, and we'll just push these back one at a time. This one's having a little bit of problems. Let's go. There we go. So now we can hit D. And now it's got holes through it. Um, of course, if I wanted to save those, what I could do first is do Q mesh polygroup island, pull these out and hold down control, and then um, pull out copies of these. So now that these are separate meshes here, I can do control shift, select lasso, control shift A, go ahead and split those. And now we can go back here to this mesh. And now we can just do polygroup island, polygroup island, hit D. And now we've got these things which will fit directly in there. And now we can just kind of move those back in here. And those can kind of be our like little rubber nubs. I'm working at a very small scale, so you might see Z Modeler do some interesting things as far as uh, it might get a little warbly around the edges here. But we can also just go through here and oops these might be a little bit low res let's see if it'll work it we can bevel edge loop complete nah so let's instead of beveling what i'm going to do is do inset polygroup all region we'll kind of pull these in and now we can do a q mesh polygroup all and then just hold down shift and that'll kind of pull along see how it's kind of warbling i'm working at a really low resolution so that's having a hard time or a really small size scale i should say so, but you know, when you go back here, it's not a big deal, just little rubber pods there. Uh, so now you can kind of go through here and move this stuff around as needed. Alt tap this one, move this one around as needed. And you know what, let's take a look at this. Shift D, looks like I accidentally inserted a line here. So we can go to insert, single edge loop, hold down Alt. Now I get rid of that. It's kind of giving me a weird pinching on the side there. Something like that you could do. Um, or if you wanted to, you could just dynamesh this thing down and do all that stuff. Um, how do we do it on time? Yeah, all right, we're about done. I've got to go hit the gym before I go to work. I've been skipping the last couple of days, so I've been getting a little low energy. So um, I will see you guys next. Well, actually, that's a good point. Let's look at the calendar here. So today's the 23rd. I am going to miss next Tuesday uh, on the Pixelogic channel. 
and next week on my channel as well. So I'm going to be out next week, but then starting up in June, we'll be right back to where we started. Um, thanks everybody for showing up and uh, next week or the week after, I should say, I will probably just continue to go through here, get this things cleaned up and um, yes, this will be recorded on the Pixelogic channel. Let me go ahead and link you that before I leave. Um, YouTube stream, copy, 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 copy. Yeah, just go there. No problem. Thanks for showing up, everybody. There's the Pixelogic stream there link. And then if you want to go to my YouTube channel, there's a bunch of stuff in there. We, we have my stream backed up as well as a bunch of other stuff. So there's my stuff. So you guys have a good day. I'll see you next time. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign out.